Here in this example, we're told the cost of leasing a new Ford Mustang is $2,311 for a down payment and a processing fee plus $276 per month. For how many months can you lease this car with $10,000? So let's identify the important information. We made a down payment of $2,311, uh, down payment and processing fee, and then our monthly rate is $276. We want to know how many months we can lease the car if we only have $10,000. So let's start by identifying our variable M as the number of months we can lease the car. And our cost then is going to be 2311 plus $276 per month, so that's times M. And we only have $10,000 to devote to this entire project with the car, and so that amount has to include the initial $2,311 as well as the $276 a month. So let's start by subtracting $2,311 from both sides. We want to get the variable on one side, the variable term, and then the numerical terms on the other. So 10,000 minus 2311 leaves us with 276M equals 7,689. Let's verify that on our calculator. 10,000 minus 2,311. So 7,689, now we're going to apply the division property of equality, divide both sides just by 276, leave the M. So the left-hand side becomes M, the right-hand side 7,689 divided by 276. So we're gonna round and let's round to two decimals. So that's going to be looking at the five. Go one to the right is eight. So this would be eight six. So 27.86 months is how long I can lease. Now, what's practically logical for this situation is that I could not lease the car for 28 months. I'm not going to lease a car for 27 and a half months. It's usually month to month. So I'm going to summarize this by saying that I can lease this car for 27 months for the 10,000. Because if I round it up, which is where it would be if I did normal rounding, that would be 28 months but that would be more than the $10,000 that we have. So let's write this out in a nice summary statement. So our summary statement is I can lease the car for a full 27 months with $10,000. So how you're going to leave your final answer just depends upon the situation that you're given. So always take a minute and look at your final result and try to fit it into the context of the problem that you have. All right, let's go on to part B. You just purchased an iPad for $872. The value of the iPad decreases by $175 per year. How long before the iPad is worth half of its original value? So we bought it for $872. It loses $175 a year. We want to know how long before it's worth half of the original value. Well, the original value was $872. So half of 872 is, so let's take 872 divided by two, that's gonna give us half, 436. So the question then is, how long before the iPad is worth $436? So let's let T equal number of years. 
So my equation is going to be 872. That's what I started. That was the original price I paid. It loses $175 per year. So every year, every T times 175 is how much the value goes down. And I want to know how many years before the value is $436. So let's solve this now. Let's subtract 872 from both sides. So if I take 436 minus 872, that's going to be negative 436 because I know that 2 times 436 is 872. So if I subtract 872 from 436, I get negative 436. But let's just verify that on our calculator. So indeed, 436 minus 872 is negative 436. Now I'm going to divide both sides by negative 175. So these negatives would normally make me nervous in an application problem that something wasn't right. But because both of them are negative, I know I'm going to end up with a positive result. So I'm not even going to include the negatives when I divide 436 by 175. So that gives me, and again, let's round to 2.49. And in this context, I can have a value that decreases not just at each actual year, but the months along the way. So it's OK to say that t is approximately 2.49. In fact, I can even say that t is about 2.5 or two and a half years. So let's see how to write that in a nice summary statement. So we're just going to say it like this. The iPad will be worth half its value in about 2.5 years or two years and six months. So we're just trying to give some familiarity to this number, 2.49. So it makes sense to talk about it as two and a half or two years and six months. All right, let's look at part C. You have taken four out of five tests for your math class and earned scores of 85%, 92%, 89%, 86%. What percent must you score on the last test to achieve a 90% average overall? So let's start by identifying a variable and let's call it x. So let's let x equal the percent on the last exam, the percent that's required. So for me to identify an average, then I'm going to need to add together all of the percents that I earned. So 85 plus 92 plus 89 plus 86, and then if I knew what the last one was, I would add it, and then I would divide by the total number of exams, which is five exams, in order to obtain the 90% that I'm looking for. So each of these is a percent, this will be a percent, so they're all already determined out of 100. I'm dividing by 5, so that result should give me what I want, which is my 90% average. So I need to figure out what this value of x is. So let's start by adding all of these numbers together. So if I add 85 plus 92 plus 89 plus 86, I get 352. So what I have is 352 plus x divided by 5 equals 90. Now in order to isolate x, I'm going to first multiply both sides by 5 because the 5 division is kind of messing everything up. So multiply the numerator on both sides by 5 kind of running out of room here. So I have 352 plus x equals 450. So 90 times 5 is 450. Now I'm going to subtract 352 from both sides. 
So if I do that, let's have our calculator help us. 450 minus 352. That leaves me with 98. So what that means is that if I want a 90% average overall, I'm going to need to earn a 98% average on the last exam. So let's write that as a nice summary statement. So I can say it best like this. In order to earn a 90% average overall, I must score at least 98% on the last exam. So anything above 98 would certainly give me something above 90 overall.